The next presenter that we have is Major Frances Young, and the title of her speech is Leading Change for Yourself and Your Team. So as she comes, Major Frances Young is a 66 golf, currently working in the maternal child health section. She has her master's degree in nursing administration and is enrolled for her doctoral degree in strategic leadership. She has served in various leadership roles throughout her military career. She has won a national transformation challenge and currently holds three Hawaiian state records in powerlifting, helping her team to qualify for the world's last November. She loves spending time with her family, improving the lives of others, and challenging herself through fitness. Um, can we give her a hand as she comes up? Well, thank you. Yes, okay, hello. Um, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Major Young, and I am a labor and delivery nurse, and I prefer to kind of walk around. Hello, I see some very familiar faces. Um, but thank you so much for coming to today's Inspire Conference, and thank you for allowing me to kind of um, share with you a framework for change. So. I just want to kind of take a few moments and get a sense of the audience and start my own personal timer so I can stay on track. I know I maybe have to draw things out a little bit because the commander will be following me, but um, can I get a sense of who we have in the audience today? Um, any nurses? Okay, go on, perfect. Any physicians or providers? Okay, awesome. And then were most of you kind of voluntold to come here today? No, not at all. This is wonderful. This is so exciting. Okay, awesome. So we have our behavioral health techs that are in the room as well. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Woohoo, Specials Roy and Sergeant Kelly. That's outstanding. And friends and family members, and I believe a few of them out there. VI, shout out. Woohoo. <laughs> awesome. So a good array of individuals. And so I, I wanted to kind of pick a topic that would um, be authentic to you and, and something that I felt like I would be able to kind of share. But I was also, a little bit about me, um, I've been in the Army for about 12 years now and I started my career doing, I got an ROTC scholarship, I was very fortunate to get, to be allowed to do that and um, get my nursing school paid for, so so blessed with that. Um, fast forward, here I am 12 years later, I've had numerous uh, assignments, have had an opportunity to be in command of about 400 people, and it was probably one of the best things, best experiences I've had in my military career thus far. But um, I'm currently a labor and delivery nurse working in the maternal child health section, helping our team get ready for a joint commission. And so I just got to go to ILE, and so I came back from that, and I wanted to kind of share with you, so some of you guys who have been to ILE, this is straight out, I am not an expert in change management by any means. Um, and I, I'm just, there's my caveat, there's my disclaimer. Um, but I believe we all possess within us uh, of ability to impact change, whether that's within ourselves or within our teams that we are working with every single day, whether that's your family or your team. And some of you, if you may not even realize the potential that you have within you. And so I hope today, um, through my 20 minute discussion or so, we'll kind of give you some things to think about, um, whether it's within your personal life or, with, or I can give you a framework that can kind of help you lead that change within your own sections. Okay, so that's, that's my introduction there. Um, I'm a daughter, I'm a sister, I'm a mother, I am a soldier, and I I'm consider myself a leader. And no matter what your title is or what your roles and responsibilities may be, um, something brought you here today, and I'm glad to hear it's not your voluntold to come, so that's, we're off to a great start already. Um, but something brought you here today, and whether or not it was my presentation or the many wonderful presentations that have been um, throughout this morning, I hope that the one thing I want to give to you is the word change. Okay, next slide, please. All right, so this is our agenda, what we're going to talk about today. And I just, I love this quote, um, kind of caveats on the captain's speech, or the presentation she just did, you know, with turbulence. And if you wait for the moment when everything is ready, you'll never begin. So don't wait till a year from now where you wish you would have changed something about either your life or your situation beforehand. Good, good afternoon. Um, we're going to talk about what is your why, because it all starts with you. Change comes from within. I'm a firm believer in that. You can't change anything unless you're willing to change yourself, right? You've got to look yourself in the mirror and be able to change whatever it is you need to change. Um, I'm going to give you a framework using John Cotter's eight-step methodology. Um, many of you may have heard of that before. Some of you, it sounds like a foreign language, and that's okay. Um, it's eight steps that, when followed sequentially, and is a proven framework to help you lead to sustained change. And you can apply that in your own life or in the lives of those around you. 
Um, and so you can Google the Cotter method, Cotter framework for change. It's eight steps. I'm going to kind of go through those steps quickly with you, but I want to capture your attention um, with the next slide, please. All right, this is bottom line up front. This is what I want you to take away from this um, presentation today, is to, to think about and marinate what is your why. What brought you here today? What is your why within your sections? What is your purpose? And you can take that beyond that. What is your purpose in life? Um, you know, we all have different belief systems and values that we hold dear to us. But you can't, you got to know where you're going and where, where you are to get to where you're going. Or does that make sense? You got to know where, where you're starting from. So what is your why? I, I, um, I think I'm going to let you watch this next little video here. you're going to see that that was all a game, that that was all an illusion. The only thing that's going to matter is the impact you have on other people's lives. We are all on a separate journey. But the beautiful thing about our life here on this earth is at my funeral, they are going to talk about my success. They're going to talk about who Nick was and how Nick lived, and how Nick loved and encouraged. Success is incredibly important, but even more important than success, it's having an impact. It's knowing you haven't walked the planet in vain. It's knowing that because you've been here, you've blessed lives. you develop developed people. And you have made the world a better place. The effect you have on others is the most valuable currency there is. Everything you gain in life will rot and fall apart. And all that will be left of you is what was in your heart. Life is a mirror. And life gives us not what we want. Life gives us who we are. When you were born, you cried while the world rejoiced. Live your life in such a way that when you die, the world cries while you rejoice. We'll just let that sink in for a minute. The, um, the effect, you can go to the next slide. It's my favorite, my favorite quote in that, in that little video. The effect you have on others is the most valuable currency there is. It's pretty, it's pretty powerful. Um, no matter what your belief system is, whatever values you hold dear, the relationships with the people that you make a difference in are patients, your families, your siblings, those relationships matter. And when you look at people as people, you can change them. You can change yourself. When you look at yourself as a person and when you value what's inside of you. So what is your why? Just think about that as, as I continue. Um, I want to share with you a story. You can go to the next slide. So I want to share with you this story. So this Oh gosh, it was like my third or fourth assignment. I got a station to um, Fort Stewart, Georgia. And I met this girl there. And she was really sad, kind of depressed. Um, had a good family, um, had some kids. But she was kind of not really satisfied in her life or her job performance. Didn't really know what her purpose was. Um, tried to be a friend to her, motivate her. But she just was kind of in, stuck in a rut, right? And so... Um, I knew her for several years there. I was there for like four years. The, the branch basically told me, hey, Captain, you got to move out of the Fort Stewart because I was living it up down there. But it was a great, great assignment. But um, this, this friend that I knew, 
she just didn't know what her purpose was, didn't know what her, her why was. You know, was doing her job at work and didn't really find much satisfaction in that. Um, similar to your story, um, her brother passed away really suddenly and un unexpectedly. And she went through a really dark time in, in her life where things kind of had to change, um, kind of had to get a whole new perspective on where she was at and was very, I don't want to say depressed, but really sad. Because if you don't have that sense of purpose and that sense of fulfillment, the relationships that you have with other people around you aren't going to be the best that they can be. Um, so fast forward, that person was me. Um, I was very unsatisfied with my life. I always had to get um, taped for height and weight. I could do my PT tests, but I was just, that was part of who, what defined me at the time was, you know, my, my feelings of not really having a sense of purpose. Um, and I was happy in my marriage, but I didn't like my husband and see me with like lights on and stuff like that. Like, and it's, it's, I'm being real with y'all. Like, you know, I mean, we like, get out of the shower, like wrap up with like towels because you're just embarrassed or um, ashamed. Um, but I decided when I got orders to move to Texas that I was going to change my life and, and make it, find what my why was, find what my purpose was. And so the next, the next click is going to be, a, not just to, not to shock anybody, but it's going to be a very revealing photo to you because, I, and I want to share this with you, not to, not to put myself up on a pedestal in any way at all, but to just to share with you how real change can be for people. Um, and you're going to see it. I want you to look at my face. I was really unhappy. And we all go through struggles in our lives where we're unhappy physically with how we are. Um, so go ahead, next slide. Um, I was just so sad. It was, I mean, I know it's like revealing bathroom selfie, got it, you know. I can laugh about it now, but when I look at that person, that wasn't me, that wasn't who I am. Um, and so your change starts with you. Whether you have an addiction to food, an addiction to whatever, I mean, most of us hopefully doing drugs around here, but. Uh, anything. It can be anything. And so, you know, I just I want to impress upon you that your change can be anything. It could be you need, you know you need to spend more time with your kids. You know, it, if you look at yourself in the mirror and you see that sadness that's just transcending, I want you to get real with yourself um, and make the changes today. And I'm, that's what I'm going to share with you. That's the message is I'm going to share with you a proven framework that will help you. And I can, you can draw some parallels with my story to you, um, but you, there's hope to get out of it, right? Um, and this, there's many frameworks you can follow. This is just one of them, but I want to inspire you to make that change today. And if you click the next slide. So my little transformation here, I committed to 12 weeks. I joined this little challenge at my gym, and I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take back my life. I'm going to make my, do these changes, follow, like I had been on every diet there ever was, Avocare, Special K, counting my calories. <laughs> I didn't, like, that was a real diet, but no, I wouldn't do any of that right. So I committed to, like, getting surrounded by expert professionals. I got a trainer, which I'm not telling you, you got to get a trainer, but that's what I did to help me be accountable. You can get an accountability person in whatever change you are. You know, many of you are behavioral health. That's, yes, get somebody to help you that's a subject matter expert, because you can't do it alone. Um, and then... The last picture, again, is, I swear to promise you, it's not to like, woohoo, you can have abs too. It ain't about that. This is just to share with you. You can click it. It's just like, I didn't think that was possible, but I want you to look at my smile. That is so gen, like that's, I was so happy. Like, and it's not about the physical, what's on the outside. It's about truly my transformation from sad and depressed and realizing that I, I didn't think I could do anything, but simple things like running, to late to the airport, like my flight gets in late, picking up my kids and running to the gate to the next. I couldn't have done that at the old me. I wasn't, I could barely hold myself up on that dang old foam roller without shaking. I was like, oh God, I'm like out of shape. I can do the PT test, but that's it. But like the sky's the limit, right? <laughs> no, I just, you can change whatever it is you need to change. Um, 12 weeks, I was able to, somehow I just was trying to win in my gym. I didn't think I'd actually win in the whole nation. Like that was kind of crazy, but it's possible, and anything is possible. I just want to give that hope to you. 
um, that you can make that change. Whatever your why is, whatever brought you here today, you can do that. So next slide. And we'll get to the Cotter's model. This is really where I get excited because there's a way to get out of this. All right, so you can lead change. I love quotes, by the way, in case you didn't know. You can lead change or change will lead you. Again, that goes back to the whole look at yourself in the mirror. Um, it starts from within, okay? Um, click, these are all the reasons why these change efforts might fail. Um, you can relate some of them to my personal story I shared with you today, but change is hard. People are resistant to change naturally because we're afraid. We're afraid of doing things differently. Oh, thank you, sorry, let me get out of the way. I just don't like being way up here and like talking down to y'all. Um, but change is so hard. You know, you can, when you take a, all right, let me I'll tell you another story about me. I just got back from leave. I was in Maui and I was living it up with some cookies and sugar and then today I'm like, I'm gonna be right. I'm gonna eat my good meal preps and then I'm gonna get a headache later because I'm having a sugar detox, withdrawals. That's a negative reaction, but <laughs> that's somebody that's a long time smoker. You take away cigarettes from them, they're gonna have a negative panic reaction. That's just human nature, it's physiological. It just happens and that's okay. But as long as we accept that and acknowledge it, we can move past that. Um, this is another, another thing, you know, change is gonna be different for different people and, and that's okay. Next slide. So the Cotter model, um, perfect. This and this is where I'm gonna kinda go kinda quickly. Be, again, it's cause you can look up all this stuff on the internet. That's really not the, the crux of what I wanna, what, you, what I wanna want you to take away from today. It's just the knowing that there is a model. Um, so within your teams and within yourself, I created a sense of urgency through myself by giving myself a deadline. 12 weeks, I'm gonna make this change. You wanna make a change in your organization? Give yourself a deadline, create a sense of urgency. That's step one. Go ahead, next slide. Um, you can go to the next slide. <clears throat> so step one, establish a sense of urgency. Your folks that you're trying to implement this change in your unit, say many of you, maybe, hopefully y'all getting ready for joint commission in case you didn't know it was coming, like a steam train is coming at you. You might want to set a sense of urgency. That's urgent, right? That's, that's our next 25 meter target. We need to make all efforts, all hands on deck to making sure, now we shouldn't be doing this just for joint commission, but truly, right, all year round, all the time, our efforts that we're putting forth to give our patients the best care experience possible. Um, if it's a personal choice in your life, give yourself a deadline, but give yourself, you need to know the why behind it. Um, comp consequences and complacency. So what that point means is you need to let your team know that there might be consequences. What happens if we don't achieve this change? Um, for me, what happens if I don't stick to my goals? Well, I'm gonna be the same sad person I was because I didn't follow through and it'd be another time I failed at this thing, right? Um, for your team and your units, what, what is the end state that you're trying to get at? How do you wanna help shape their, their efforts towards making that change sustainable? Okay, step two, next slide. Creating a guiding coalition. You need expert people on your team. You don't wanna have everybody on your team that's speaking the exact same thing you are because then you're not having diversity, you're not gonna grow to your best potential. But for me, my guiding coalition was my, I outsourced, I got expert people. My husband was a huge supporter. I mean, he would hide my, I love trail mix, so he would I'd buy trail mix or peanut butter and he would hide it and only <coughs> give it to me, God bless you, he'd only give it to me when it was time for me to have it, which thank goodness for him because otherwise I would've probably binge eat on that, right? But you're surrounding yourself with your team of experts. Your, your officers, you're surrounding yourself with those NCOs that know what they're doing. You're surrounding yourself with those civilians who have been here for 10 years and know how to work the system and, and what we need to do to get the mission accomplished. So create a guiding coalition. You can't do it yourself and as a leader, you can't be everywhere at the same time managing all the things. So you've got to empower your team to make that difference. Okay, next step. Got to develop a vision and strategy. Your people, your team, you need to know where you're wanting to go to. Where are they trying to get to? Um, if you, if you guys, have, you know, hopefully, people know what smart goals are. Okay, they need to be specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, timely. Um, you got to be able to see your end state. And our commander does a great. Um, if you don't know what the commander's end state is, look on the um, TAMC internet. She's got her SharePoint that has the. Commander's top 10 priorities, the end state of where we want to get as a high reliability organization. You can take a look at that and your mission in your section or your team should nest well with hers. That would be my suggestion, so. Okay, um, next, next stage, next 
Um, stage four, communicate the vision. There, did you know there's over 130 million books in the world, according to Google's advanced algorithms. I Googled it, and it's on Wikipedia, so it must be factual, correct? No, but so over 130 million books. With that, there's like hundreds of thousands that talk about leadership and change, because it's such a, it's such a thing within ourselves that we want to be able to change. We want to be able to make an impact. We want to have a sense and purpose in what we do in our day-to-day -day lives. So if you communicate your change vision to your team, they're going to know how to get there. It's like drawing them a roadmap of how to get from X to Z. Okay. Um, studies show, and this Cotter, um, John Cotter had done this research, and his data points showed that most leaders under-communicate. They think they're communicating, but they're really not because they're end user, their frontline people don't really know what the vision is. And so if you survey your teams that you work with, um, you'll, they may not have any clue what the mission is. And so I challenge you to um, over communicate where you're trying to go, over communicate that vision. Uh, for me, relating back to my personal story, how I did this and how I can see the parallels where I made little post-it notes everywhere I would go. So like what my goal is, is to Stick it, be good for, and I took little, little steps at the time. I want to be good for a week, which then be good for two weeks, then be good for three weeks, and be good means work out and eat right, right? So, but I put little post-it notes everywhere I would be tempted. So in my car, because I used to go to the donut store two times on the way home from night shift, but I'd go and I'd pay cash so my husband wouldn't know <laughs> which donut store I went to, but it got so bad I'd pull up and the little donut ladies would be like, oh yes, yeah, so here you go. I'm like, oh my gosh. So I had to like put no post-it notes in my car so I wouldn't be tempted to forget about where my vision was trying to go to. Um, so over-communicate your vision. Um, be transparent. Be transparent with your team. Be transparent with your family of what you're trying to do. If you're trying to quit smoking, Tell everybody, make it, get your accountability team surrounding you to help encourage you to make that change. Okay, next slide. Step four, empower broad-based actions. Um, us as leaders, it's, it's critical that we help empower the lowest level person that's doing that job. And I don't mean lowest level, I mean like just the, the front junior subordinate that is in the trenches doing that work. Um, if we empower those people to make the, to be able to speak up and make the changes, then our changes will grow tenfold. Um, if for, for failure to do that limits, really limits where we're able to move forward in that change. Okay, next slide. Stage six, generate short-term wins. Um, like I said before, so I would try to give myself little celebrations if I was good for one week or then two weeks, or if I lost a pound this week, I could lose another pound this week. But short-term wins, are important for organizational change because it helps keep the momentum going forward. Otherwise, people become complacent. They think, oh, nothing we do it makes a difference. They get apathetic with the mission that they're trying to accomplish. They don't see the, the results of all the hard work. So finding corny little things to celebrate with your team is so important. Um, it keeps the morale going, keeps them focused on the task at hand and to accomplish that end state. So, Whatever it is, and that's why you surrounded yourself with that guiding coalition, because you, you may not be super creative to come up with, you know, I, I use an example like on labor and delivery, we have these little Tris award pins that we started doing for patients, or for our staff members that would get positive accolades on the Tris comments, the surveys that we would get back, and if they get like two or three positive comments, they get this little Tris pin on their badge, and it's so corny. But it's really fun, and people started like getting competitive about it. They're like, "Well, why not? You know, I can't believe I didn't get mentioned or whatever." So, surround yourself with people that can help come up with these ideas to keep that momentum going, and you'll really be able to see um, the transformational changes occur within your section. Um, next slide. Stage seven: consolidate gains and produce more change. So this is the second to last step. So this is one of the most important steps. They're all important, but with John Cotter's model, it's important that your steps be sequential, otherwise you rush to failure. And we're not going to have any successful organizational change if we are not focused on getting to that end state. Um, consolidating your gains is going to help your team, again, keep their morale super high, keep me motivated. So with my personal story, my consolidating gains was, I did it for 12 weeks, so then I'd get down to a month. I'd have a, my little cheat day with my family, and we'd go celebrate, and then I'd get right back on track that next day to keep that momentum going forward, to keep that drive pushing beyond. 
And our last stage, thank you, is to anchoring those approaches into the culture. Um, this is probably the hardest because change can take years. You know, my story was only, that I share with you is only over 12 weeks. But those changes that I made in my life and with my family have become anchored. That was five years ago. Um, and I can say that because of the changes that I made back then, I'm happier, I'm healthier, my family's benefited from that. Um, I've been able to really truly see, and for me the, the pivotal point was not realizing that our health is such a gift. And we take it for granted every single day. And so I go back to my opening slide of what is your why? Is your why to help people? Is it to help your family? You know, what, whatever that is for you, find it and focus on it and anchor it down to become the change that can be sustainable throughout the rest of your future. Next slide. In conclusion, again, you can Google all of this. It's too easy. If you've been to ILE, I'll share the slides with you. Um, but I'm going to pass around this bag, and don't judge me. This is my husband's bag. I just really love it because <laughs> it's like a little magic bag. But I want to um, just, just you're going to take one and pass it uh, the rest of the, of the ground. And it's not a federal fence. I looked it up, too. You'll see what I'm talking about in a second. But I want you to take one, and I want you to leave here today um, thinking about what that change is in your life. How do you change yourself so you can change your teens? If you do that, we're going to continue to grow even more so as an organization. It's really just amazing when you think about the amazing effect we all have with our strengths and with our weaknesses. Um, but if we, if we change ourselves to be better, we're going to change those around us. Um, so it's 25 minutes, and I'm going to give you, we're going to start with specialist voice. So please pass that, um, pass that around and, and take that with you. And for those of you tuning in, I apologize. I don't have any to gift you <laughs> through. But if you come see me, I'll be happy to, to share one with you. Um, there's just one more slide, Specialist Roy. Thank you. Um, and one of my other favorite quotes, I told you I love quotes, is be the change you wish to see in the world. So what is your change? This is a framework to help give you a framework to change yourself or others around you. But what is your change and what is your why? And thank you so much for coming. It's been my true honor and opportunity to spend a few moments with you today and share my story. And, and thank you so much for being engaged and for staying awake and for coming out of your busy schedules. Very grateful. Um, I'll be happy to talk to anybody afterwards if they'd like, but thank you.